Hi guys, glad to have make it, made it. So, um, so today, um, well, I'm Dimitri, first of all, so I'm replacing my CEO, uh, Peter Zaitsev. So today I'm going to cover a little bit what we learned integrating Grafana into Prometheus. Uh, and with Prometheus, so um, we actually created a tool which is called Percona Monitoring and Management. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper inside our experiences with it, um, our challenges, stuff like that. So, first of all, apologies up front. So, Peter had this, right? So, stuck in the airport. Apparently, this actually looked quite massive. And I had that, this little, you know, uh, cattle being stuck at the, at the highway yesterday at the border. So, I was stuck for four hours in traffic jam, which was wonderful. So, you know, if something happens, Murphy's Law, right? Um, so, Percona's uh, focus actually is, don't know if you guys know Percona specifically, but our focus is really to champion um, open source database solutions, right? So provide actually customers with the best database uh, performance potentially on a database solution. We are not weather experts, right? So what, what was noticeable yesterday. <laughs> um, so today actually there's a talk I saw uh, for weather forecasting with Grafana actually behind this with Max. So meaning of Percona itself is that we provide solutions, right? Solutions for customers. Uh, we provide services with support, consulting, training. And the idea is actually to provide a solution to their customer, to their needs, right? Pre tailor it to their needs specifically. Uh, we create also software, which is always 100% free and open source. Um, we also, when we're doing those services, we try to avoid having our customers have a vendor lock-in because we don't believe in, well, forcing people to use the same technology for in a permanent uh, way. Um, we also have some open source solutions, so I don't know if you guys know it, for example, Percona Server for MySQL, uh, Percona Server for MongoDB, which are alternatives for enterprise versions of, um, for example, MySQL Enterprise, uh, MongoDB Enterprise. Um, so those ones are, of course, also, again, open source, so that's where we, where we focus our products on, also open source technologies, of course. So, of course, this talk is more about the monitoring solution, right? So, um, and one of the reasons that we went actually with an open source data, well, we, we saw actually in the monitoring uh, sphere that most tools are commercial, right? If you look at MySQL Enterprise Monitor, for example, it's inside the enterprise sphere of Oracle. So it means that you have to pay for a license specifically. Um, there's also a lot of tools which are cloud only, like Vivid Cortex, very nice tool, but it's actually forcing you to uh, store all the information inside the cloud. Um, the other option that actually happens a lot, and previously, pr prior to my job at Percona, I actually worked uh, as an open source integrator, and we build our, typically our solutions from the ground up with Graphite and Nagios and stuff like that, right? So we made our own monitoring solution specifically. Um, so enter Percona Monitoring and Management, right? So it's a 100% free and open source tool again, right? So I cannot emphasize enough on that. Um, and the idea is that it can work with the, in the cloud or out the cloud, right? You can actually have it on-premise. Why is that interesting? Because of security requirements sometimes. Um, the idea of PMM itself is that it's easily deployable, right? Because we want, to avoid, uh, we want to avoid you guys having to spend too much time to actually integrate new templates, uh, build something from the ground up. So it's something that can actually deploy in 15 minutes using Docker instances or using something else, virtual machines, et cetera. So the, we, provide, we make sure that we provide actually multiple options for our end users. Um, the focus of the tool itself, of course, is developers and DBAs, having a real insight on what's happening on the database level. Right? So, um, and it's really focused on a multitude of database technologies. So currently, you have MySQL, MongoDB. You can have external exporters with uh, Postgres, etc. So the tool is really focused on database monitoring, query monitoring, etc. So one of the questions that came in when, when defining, creating such a tool was, how can we build a nice tool without actu with actually a small team? How can we? limit the group of people we have to put on a certain product while you know you can actually build it from the ground up and stuff like that but that's not really efficient so what we do is actually we do it together with the open source community right so that's why we open source our technology that's also why we chose for example to work with grafana and prometheus um, 
So the reason for using that, those technologies is pretty simple, right? We, 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 Prometheus and Grafana have a very large community, hence the people here, actually. Um, and it's designed as a as really extensible platform. Um, what we also liked about it is actually the permissive license, right? So um, the Apache license, for example, is, in my opinion, very interesting for um, in, well, developing tools. Um, also, from a support perspective, the fact that there's so much activity on it, for example, the Prometheus exporters, there's a lot of tools active on it, right? So you can actually fetch a lot of information, um, and it's already pre-built in, in a way, so it's really easy to integrate, potentially. So if you look at the exporters that, that exist, uh, you have them for almost every database flavor. So when actually focusing on PMM, we looked at, well, what do we want to really achieve, right? So um, first of all, of course, we want to have something which is simply simple to install, right? So simple to deploy. We want to have something which gives users an immediate visibility on what's happening on their database environment. Um, and the idea is to do that, of course, is with the dashboard functionalities that you have with Grafana. Um, and next to that, people, well, when, when you, for example, you have database issues, people will focus, for example, on the queries. Uh, but while focusing on the queries, you don't always look directly to the metrics, right? So what we want to do is make sure that you have a tool which is integrated, which is integrating both things, right? That you can actually f find out what's actually the cause for your slowdowns. Is it related to simply the query not using an index correctly? Or is it actually uh, uh, focused on some sort of configuration parameter which is, which is less optimal? Or is there something on the workload which is triggering such response? So it's interesting that you can correlate those findings specifically. So if you look at PMM itself, so, um, so typically you, get, you have the query analytics tool in it. Um, the idea is that it shows you, for example, the top uh, 10 or top 20 problematic queries. It's fetched typically from the slow query log, or it can be fetched on a different way. But the idea is that you actually see what's the most um, load-causing um, system, well, system load-causing queries themselves. So um, if you look at this, for example, these are the top 10 queries which are taking the most system load specifically from the, from the environment. Um, the idea is that you can understand why are they causing this load. Well, is this, for example, are you guys seeing, for example, inodb IO read weight? So is the system actually waiting for having the ability to read information? Um, is there, for example, full table scans? Uh, can we see, for example, well, we've sent too, we sent um, too little information for the rows that we're examining? So those are actually things that are um, interesting to correlate. This makes sure that you actually can optimize your queries properly. So I don't know if people uh, use Percona Toolkit in the past, or people who actually have to monitor uh, databases regularly. Um, Having to see, for example, what is, actually what is actually causing those slowdowns on queries is sometimes very difficult. And this tool will actually show you uh, more in insight into it. So how can you improve their performance, right? So inside the query analytics tool itself, it also shows you um, what actually is the create table, right? So what indexes are created, um, the JSON output for well, is it using the correct index? Is it using file sorts? Stuff that are important to understand when you're having performance issues. Um, and the same sort of thing, it gives you actually an example that you can run on the database to have the same sort of output, to understand a little bit what is this query actually trying to fetch. So we integrated this with Grafana, and the interesting thing is, is that um, we're using actually the host selector, stuff like that, just to make sure that you actually can pinpoint well, correlate the correct queries with the correct server. And next to that, of course, the integration was done uh, through iframe, right? So it's easy, actually. Uh, the, 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 it, it seems it's actually almost seamlessly linked to each other. So this is actually an external tool. External tool actually pushes information inside Grafana, inside Prometheus, actually. So simplifying deployment. Um, the problem with, with Prometheus, for example, if you want to exp uh, de deploy multiple exporters, it's pretty hard. 
Um, we actually created a custom agent which can be installed on the, on the system itself, right? So on the MySQL servers, um, which is actually very handy and very easy to integrate. And you can actually just put in um, PMM admin at MySQL, for example, so that it actually will uh, fetch the MySQL metrics and push them to the Prometheus server. So this is actually very, very, um, well, it, we try to make sure that it's simplified so that you don't have to really push towards, well, fetch it from a specific HTTP port, et cetera, that you don't have to interact with it exactly it yourself. Uh, there's also integration with the cloud, of course, with AWS. Um, so um, it's uh, integrated CloudWatch. Uh, what it can do is fetch, um, well, fetch what servers are active and understand, for example, if they're monitored. Um, and you can actually add them easily inside Grafana yourself uh, just to make sure that you're monitoring all the servers that, well, need to be monitored. The dashboard itself are focused on giving you immediate well, value is a big word, immediate overview, right? So um, immediately when you, so there's, um, of course, dashboard for inodb specifics, uh, replication specifics, MongoDB, whatever. But for example, the moment that you're actually log logging in on the system itself, what is nice to see is that you can immediately see the MySQL uptime, um, the, the MySQL threads that are currently active, the amount of it, potential problems can be easily identified by using powerful dashboards. So, and the good thing about working with Grafana itself is that it's, well, a very nice dashboard API, right? So um, you have um, the ability to make multiple dashboards, make, it, make versioning. Uh, there, honestly, the templating engine is very nice. And um, what, you, what, what we currently are doing is, for example, um, repeat, using repeating rows, repeating columns, just to make sure that the overview page, so if you go to pmmdemo.percona.com, for example, uh, it will show you immediately, for example, all the multiple database environments and all their specific metrics, and you can link directly towards it. Same sort of thing for the panels, um, and this is more for MongoDB then, um, the example. Uh, you can immediately see, for example, in this case, uh, what's happening on the uh, well, the environments themselves, the memory usage, and well, you can scroll down, of course, right? So this is, um, um, so on the table itself, so if you go to pmmdemo.percona.com, you will see that um, there's actually tags used uh, for group grouping uh, MySQL servers, and actually also giving you the metrics specifically. Um, so it's very easy to use tags to build out navigation menus which is typically a problem the moment that you're using something else like a monitoring for a monitoring solution. So, of course, there are challenges, right? So uh, working uh, with uh, Grafana and Prometheus were challenging times at some cases. And one of the things that was a bit problematic is alerting. Um, and it's still actually problematic, right? So how to use alerting in multi-server environments? Because at this point, you still need to do it on a host basis. Um, and what we would like to have, for example, is to have, for example, alerts based on service uh, comparable to having on an individual server. Um, why is that? Because, well, it would make life much easier for the guy who is actually creating those alerts on multiple, uh, on multiple instances. Um, so the idea is, well, what could we do? Could we use a Grafana alerts further or build an app specifically for Prometheus alerts? So that's something which is still a challenge, let me just say like that. We have a specific blog post about it, but it's not really solving it yet. So that's, that's an open question. Secondarily, annotations, right? So currently, um, so annotations, you can annotate something, but it's actually not propagating on every panel itself. Um, so how can we define, for example, similar panels and make sure that those annotations for example, well, we've been committing the moment that you that you, for example, have a um, a, um, a code commit, right? So you have committed code, you've deployed it, that you automatically can annotate that, but actually annotate that for all the se the several panels that you have in store, right? So on on the on the uh, on the Grafana environment. So that's something we're still trying to find out if there's any. Interesting insight, always interested to hear that. Um, <laughs> the single stat, 
which is um, very interesting also again. Um, but the thing is, is what is a little bit, well, I will not call it silly, right? But it's a bit weird, is the fact that, for example, 88% actually visualize it almost the same sort as 5%, right? So if you look at the trending scale, right? So those are things where we're, well, um, it would be nice to have a, a fixed Y value, right? So max value for, to make sure that you can actually visualize percentages better. So those are little simple things, right? But those might be interesting to modify. So we're looking potentially to contribute a patch on that. Um, another thing which may sound a little bit um, weird, but it happens actually quite often, is the fact that we're fetching information with the different resolutions, right? So uh, and sometimes inside MySQL, you don't want to trigger, uh, or MySQL or any other database environment, you don't want to trigger, for example, um, um, fetching information every second, right? Because this will create overhead, right? So what you want to do is, uh, when you're doing variables, for example, we do that for, we do that, for example, every 60 seconds for table information. Um, for for uh, standard status variables, this is one second. Well, dynamic resolution, resolution would be very interesting. So how can you line those graphs, right? So how, it would be interesting that you can make that data completely zoomable, because at this point, it's something which is, well, um, in my opinion, still a little bit buggy that you cannot really align that properly. Uh, so that's a bit further in the site, dynamic resolution. So Grafana supports uh, minimum resolution, right? Uh, but that's really difficult, right? Because you're still having a user configuration, potentially, to minimize overhead, for example, on the database level. The problem with doing it from the Prometheus standpoint is that you cannot just put in information, right? You cannot really propagate more information into it because it's not facts, right? You will not, you, you don't want to enforce specific data. Um, and actually, if you do wait one second, it will just give you zero if it, it doesn't have any data points. Um, there are some ugly hacks available, so that's something that we sometimes use, right? So, um, um, so for really having some sort of best available resolution by using an irate, um, would be nicer to have some sort of other option. The other tool, the other thing which is a little bit of a challenge is the auto-resolution, right? So uh, the auto-interval on the page itself, um, it's computed right now. It might be interesting that you can actually um, set it to a fixed set of intervals, right? So um, at this point, um, well, that's just, a, again, a minor thing which might be interesting to actually solve at a certain point. So those are the challenges specifically. Um, I don't know if, um, if, so those are the biggest challenges at this point. Uh, for the rest, PMM, of course, is a great tool, so I hope that you guys try it out, right? So specifically from a database perspective, I guess your DBAs will be actually thankful if you can try it out and see if it works. Um, it will give you further insights, specifically on database usage, uh, uh, potential uh, problems, etc. cetera. Um, we have Percona Live coming up in Santa Clara this year. Um, if you want to see PMM in action, uh, you can come to our booth here, um, and of course we can do some tutorial. There's some tutorials there too. I'm giving a one-on-one -on -one talk there, <laughs> um, so if you want to see me again in action, always lovely to see you guys there. So I don't know if you have questions, um, but this was the presentation. <laughs>